Hello, everybody. The topic for today's presentation is how to reach your target operating model on the biz use case on BH Telecom. My name is Yasmin Ahmed Basic. Um, I like to consider myself to be a lifelong learner, someone who believes that a change is the only constant thing. I'm also head of IT development department within the BH Telecom. And it is also my pleasure once again to be a part of Bosnia Edge Week 2021. But I would like to use this opportunity to suggest Bosnia Edge to change this from Bosnia Edge Week to Bosnia Edge Year, since the impact of these changes and everything that we have a chance to hear today can last for more than just a week, it can last for years. Actually, that was the case in our, uh, in BH Telecom. We, in 2019, we presented one use case and the impact of everything that we also saw during the conference the last four years to come, and we'll see in which way has it impacted us. Uh, we started our journey uh, as, a, as, a, as a telecom operator, as a company who would like to see what others did in the field of agile transformation, what others did, and we managed to hear the first, for example, Breitweisen Bank and other companies during the Bosnia Agile 2019, when we saw the cases that agile transformation changed the way the companies are operating. We realized that we also needed some form of the change to keep up the pace with other fellow companies, especially when it comes to telecom operators. So we started by researching. We researched our fellow companies like Croatia Telecom, uh, A1. We even went a few steps ahead and then researched the telecom operators that are coming from Europe, from New Zealand, like TDC, Spark Telecom. But we also researched some technology consulting companies like Gartner and took some advices on what is it what is the right way to do the transformation? How do you change your operating model to switch from one, one way of working, being traditional, being the biggest telecom operator in the country and moving the force of workforce and people that are working in operating model that is being there for years into something very new, something very much challenging. We researched what others are saying. We saw the, the, the results of McKinsey and company, Harvard Business Review, but at the end, we realized that they all have one thing in common. That one thing was uh, one thing was said in 2009 by Simon Sinek, Sinek, who said that we are often so obsessed by what we do and how we do it, that we often forget why we do it. If we lose sight of that crucial reason, that why, we lose the power to be the leaders and more importantly, to inspire others around us. So we basically started with one simple question, why? Uh, during digital transformation, we need to understand why, but before we get there, we needed to realize also one more thing. Uh, what does a digital transformation even mean for us? What is it? What is that buzzword? We heard a lot about it in the past few years, but if you say that you are on a way to become a digitally transformed company, is there a beginning and an end? Is there a way for you to ask somebody, when somebody asks you on the journey of your digital transformation, how far along are you? And you can never say in, in a certain percentages, we are here, we are there. Me being an engineer, I always believe that if you cannot measure it, it, doesn't not, it does not exist. So we kind of had to uh, create a way to measure our success and how far along are we in the digital transformation. We realized that we need to focus on these six building blocks, starting from uh, developing our strategy and the innovation plan for the next five years and something that is going to be uh, our measuring stick for the five years to come, focusing on our customers and the customer de decision journey and uh, doing analysis and moving mo towards what customers want in a really dynamic market. Then accordingly adjust our inside processes and do the automation wherever it's possible. Then adopt the organization so that you can have a perception that telecom is not any more traditional company. It's moving from the perception of being traditional into being much more agile, much more customer oriented, much more automate, process automated, and uh, but still focused on the technology because we are the technology led company and uh, we needed to have that never lose sight of technology in our mind. And also being a telecom operator with the rich data, uh, rich data sources, we need to realize how to push data into making our customer decision journey faster, providing realization of our strategy, building innovation, innovation things and moving forward. So basically we started with the question, as I said, why? There are four key benefits that we realize that we need to focus and give the answer as to why. First, we need to focus on our people, our effective workforce. 
then we have to focus on what are our key values that we think that need to be in the first place, that, that we need to always emphasize in each meetings, each teams, everything that we do during this digital transformation and the agile project that we're about to see, much more details about. Then after values, we need to realize that we are uh, we need to shift our mind thinking towards innovation. We need to have products that are innovative. We need to collaborate with others that are making innovative products. We need to be there on the market because classical telecommunication services are not any more innovative and they are kind of basic services that you, today you cannot live without. And then at the end, we need to focus much more on our market and what the market needs and what market wants. And those are some key four aspects that give us a simple answer to the question why. And that is that we as a BH Telecom um, is a socially responsible company which believes that only loyal workers with a transparent impact to the business success and the way that they can see how they, their values, their behavior, their approach to the innovation can be transparent and can impact the business value. Attractive workplace, uh, in an attractive workplace with innovations that keep our customers in fashion and loyal to. So how do, we, how do we do things around here? We basically realize that we need to change the way that we do our operating models. We realize that much of a majority of our operating models were focused on technology thinking because that was the first, that, uh, the first thing that, that was developed as a company, as a technology-led company. So before we had project teams, we needed to optimize projects around costs. Uh, we needed to think about technology first, provide data, provide voice, provide, provide SMS, provide IPTV. And those things that come, even in the descriptions of those services, you have technology that is still present there. But we need to move from that operating thinking, or operating model of thinking. We need to shift to product thinking. We needed to focus on the product teams, especially IT product teams. We need to optimize the way, the, the rate of our, our, the way that we need to optimize our costs, our return of investment. And we need to have an approach, especially towards the IT as a shared services first. We need to realize which services are giving us the biggest business value, which products are going to give us the biggest uh, value first. Then to move to the operating model where you have a capability thinking and uh, three aspects of business-led product teams, you are optimized strategic benefit and you are focusing especially on the benefits that are strategically positioned for the five years to come. And we need to put not any more shared services first or technology first, but agility and innovation first. We realize that you cannot make a cut from one operating model to another operating model. We realized that we need to have three operating models in place. But how do you provide, how do you manage to organize a company as big as Telecom to work in a three different operating models without doing some kind of a mind shifting or culture shifting or something similar? So we realized that each operating model, in order for us to deliver the strategy that is in place for the next five years, needs to be analyzed from the nine different perspectives. From the perspective of engagement, you need to understand that each operating model needs to have its performance way of measuring the success. So not only the measuring of the success of the operating model in whole, but as an individual, you need to focus on the KPI par parameters that, has gone, that are going to be in place for every single worker, every single workforce, everybody who's working and, the, and needs to be transparent in a way of how the workforce engagement is effectively doing positive in business success. Then you need to distribute the decision right and you need to decide within the each operating model who has the right to make the right decisions, to make the decisions for the decision maker. Then also who has the, 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 the way of uh, who is doing some finances, what are the teams, what in each operating model, who is doing the financial aspect. Uh, in order for us to succeed in each of those operating models, in a way to enable those operating models to succeed, we need to do, have a different organizational structure. We need it, we realize that if you have a traditional organizational structure, we need to shift from traditional to maybe a hybrid and then to move to the flat organizational structure. But it is, those are the elements that are coming in place and depending on a different operating model. 
partnerships and alliances and sourcing other elements that are need that are crucial for the performance and for the uh, enablement of the, delivering the full strategy in the next five years needed to be analyzed from every aspect and therefore you need to you need to know for which talent management which talents do you have in your teams in your organization that are uh, effective that are uh, elements to be a part of different operating models. Not everybody is perfect for product teams. Not everybody is perfect for innovation teams. Somebody is, uh, some, somebody's workday is basically maybe focused entirely on the product teams. Somebody likes to be an individual. Working places where you work from, how do you do, and what do you, with what do you do as a tools and the way of how do you deliver needs to be there, present there in order for us to move the enterprise culture and to say that we are shifting operating models from one part to the other. But the biggest challenge was that when we put in paper everything that we just described and analyze all three operating models and realizing that we need to have those three operating models all in place at the same time, we realize that in a traditional company, the best way to, to introduce one of those operating models is to give the perception of something that, it, that people are most commonly um, there and used to. For us, it was the answer to the question of what are we going to do? That's why we decided to build a project. We named this agile transformation journey of introducing different operating models within the telecom to be coexistent in the next five years in the same time as the Voyager project. We decided to name it Voyager based on the Star Trek serial and uh, based on the fact that when we researched all other companies and what everybody is doing about this, we needed a buzzword. We needed a buzzword that is going to be easy on the ears for everybody else to kind of see what we need to do, what are, what, uh, what are our plans to do, and what better way than to take the Star Trek serial and look at the future and have the name that is a buzzword that is going to last for years to come. And at the same time, it represents the future. Therefore, we said we are going to do the project. The project is going to last for about five years. Following the, our strategy for the next five years, it's going to be divided in three phases. Phases are divided based on the serial uh, for the season, Voyager of Star Trek serial. And it's going to start with introduction of the next generation teams, product eight product teams that are going to be in place until the end of 2021, but they're going to be the beginning of uh, at the beginning at the start or in a Q2. They're going to be uh, eight team, two teams that we are going to establish at the beginning. Their focus will be in the operating model that is called optimization. We are aware of the fact that we need to start doing the first introduction of the new operating model throughout these product teams at the beginning. Next phase is going to be Deep Space Nine phase in the space that we are going to open us uh, towards the innovations, to, towards the research and development. You can already see the impact of this phase, uh, Deep Space Nine phase. It has started in, in uh, uh, Q3 in 2021, but it was announced in the uh, BH Telecom days and the latest conference when we said that we wanted to have the, the, the uh, they had Tech Lab platform as a startup collaboration platform that is going to help us introduce another operating model called transformation. That means that we are going to transform the way that we are doing business towards the way the startups are doing their business and other companies in the market. And together, we are going to bring, bring innovation to the market and what we plan to do. At the end, we said that everything else until the end is going to be the full rollout project at the Voyager project with the full product teams of 26 planned to be at the end of the entire project and throughout the phases of after phases one and phases phase, phase two. But we couldn't do this without the supporters. Uh, last night on the LinkedIn network, I shared a video of a single a single guy dancing and the and uh, uh, in the crowd and uh, the way that how to start the movement. I would say that we from the IT department were the single guys that shirtless single guys dancing and not everybody else looked on, on us in a different point of view and trying to understand what are we doing. Then we realized that we needed to have the full team of agile leaders. In our case, it's the BH Telecom board. We needed to have the board on our side in the full agile transformation project. When I say our, 
the transformation started from within the IT department. And we said that we introducing the next operating model needs to be start with the IT product by teams. And we said that this model is going to be the right model. This model is going to prove to you that we can provide, we can develop a strategy for the next, we can execute a strategy for the next five years. We approached the board, we presented the, the, the Agile Transformation Project, and we said, we're going to use terminology that is Star Trek-based terminology. We're going to have Spock teams. We're going to have all the terminology that is related to the series. But it is going to make some huge impact. Uh, right after the presentation, right after uh, we presented the idea, the idea was fully accepted. And we got the board as a team of Agile leaders, as a, as a team that is going to be a full support for all other teams and product teams in, the, in executing this strategy and this project. Uh, in order for us to manage this, we decided that we need to split product teams. We need to split teams, uh, split some uh, key aspects of our interest. We decided that we need to build domains that are going to be named after certain fields of interest. For example, we need to have one from a board, one director that is going to be in charge of a customer communication management domain that is fully oriented towards the customer. We're going to need a data domain, data domain that is going to be fully focused on data and data analytics and everything that we can uh, extract from data in order for other teams to be fulfilling, fully fulfilling KPIs and doing the best they can do. We are going to have domain for digital services since the digital services are actually the key touch points that our end customers are communicating with, with us. We're gonna build partnerships. We're gonna execute the uh, information communication uh, program that is built to build partnerships with other companies, IT companies, in order for us to become uh, something that we in announced in 2019 in a the new role for BH Telecom, that is the system integrated role. On the right side, we're going to have a BH Tech Club platform that is going to be our team and our domain, fully uh, fulfilling all other teams within the tele Teleco. Uh, but oriented towards the startup scene and communicating with all the startups and the program that is going to be developed in that region. At the end, we're going to have the customer lifecycle domain, lifecycle domain that is going to be handling customers throughout their lifecycle, but also throughout the, our, our offerings and everything that we provide to our customers in the form of our products. And one crucial domain that stayed as a form of traditional telco domain that is a domain for infrastructure and everything that needs to be in place for all other domains to be working smoothly and not to have those any kind of interruptions. But then we realized that we did create an environment. We said that the role of the leader is not to come up with the great ideas. We came up with a great idea, but our true value came that when we said that we are created the environment for everybody else in the environment to succeed. And in order for us to fulfill this mission, as the quote says in this slide, we said the environment is going to, to apply and to be formed in a way that teams are going to use Jira as a tool, teams are going to use Scrum framework as the framework for all of the teams to start functioning, to start working. We are going to introduce new roles, product owners, Scrum master, development teams, everything that is all familiar to all of you attending today. And we are going to create the safe environment for the teams to operate. But then we got the first headache. The first headache is basically answering the question, how to pick teams, how to organize teams, how to form, how to say to everybody within the company that uh, we are introducing the new operating model, how to start the culture shift, how to move from, uh, how to prepare yourself to become somebody who is going to address the common problem that everybody else went through already. In a culture shift, in a way that people start to think differently. So what we did, we created the first IT team, as, uh, as, as I stated in one of the previous slides, for the first operating model, we created the first IT team. We called the team by the main character in the Star Trek serial Voyager, Jean-Luc Picard, and we said that the team is going to be called Picard team. Uh, Picard is gonna become the biggest buzzword within other teams that are in a different domain. For this team, we need, to, we need to place this team in the domain of a customer communication management. This team is going to represent and be created around KPI parameters that are going to create, 
going to be focused on the value that this team needs to provide to business. Team is going to be at first formed from the IT colleagues and the workplace, but later on, throughout the sprints, the team expanded towards the sales, towards the to, to support, towards the promotion, to the business value, to other business aspects, towards the technology, other technology department. But the core value and the core drivers of the team were still the products and uh, the, the operations that the team performed. Uh, core products for the team were, because the team is called Picard and it has a card within its name, the natural way for us was to focus the team on the product like e-bills, like everything that has to do with the payment and the constant interaction of us with the end customer throughout the bills, product collections, uh, development, every, uh, the key developers from, from the IT department, testing and rollouting all the new functionalities every 15 days throughout the, the sprints and to start working on the tasks and doing everything that Strum, Strum Framework is, uh, is providing as, as the guidelines. For us, as you can see on the slides, on the, the pictures below, you can see that we have a couple of challenges based on these sprint reports. You can see that we there are some sprints that, that the, the graph was not following the, the expected way that the team needs to perform. But that's the, that's the beauty of the Scrum Framework and the agility because you learn from the, uh, from the experience and basically, we look from each of these sprints, we learned a different, uh, different few things on how to work within the team, how to apply, how to adopt the framework to work for you, not you to work for the framework, but still keep the key elements of the framework that is, that is providing, and how to fulfill the KPI parameters in the de defined range. For example, for these KPI parameters, the team was allocated with, a, with a five KPI, uh, KPI parameters in a way that they were measured on a monthly basis, but the team within the month was supposed to perform uh, uh, two sprints. Uh, we allocated within the team because we wanted this team to be, a, for example, teams for all other teams. We allocated one of the best uh, resources from, from the IT, the best resources from other, other uh, departments who were willing to be a part of product teams who are open, who are much more extrovert in the nature and the much more communicative in order for us to promote this value and the change of this operating model from the IT product, uh, product team. Once we started to shift to another operating model, we realized that this team uh, was one of the teams that we needed to move forward and develop other teams. Then uh, we created another team in the customer communication management, the web shop team. Also in the customer domain, we created two teams that were handling all the uh, uh, everything that has to do with the offering of the IPTV services, prepaid services, and the team started to work. Also on the other side, we formed a team that was entirely focused on the startup scene and communicating with the startups. And all of them were given the environment that they needed in order for them to perform smoothly. We also gave them the tools in which they will work. We also gave them the way to work, and we also gave them an example because Picard team was one of the teams that moved forward and within the hit, it's already 15 sprint. We can say that the team forwarded with it, with it, with it. we say that as a, as a child diseases, we, we covered them all so far, but still there are elements of improvement with every sprint to come. So basically at the end, we, we realized that uh, we asked ourselves at the beginning, how do you make sure that people do things how you want them to do? There is, just one answer, you don't. You, you, there is no way that you can be sure that people are going to do things how you want them to do. So basically, you, we just moved from this paradigm that there is a way that you need to tell them how to do. We took the values of the Scrum and, and, uh, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the core, one of the core values of the, the team is self-organized team. And in a very traditional environment, we said to the teams that they are, you are, self-organized team. You have the power to make a certain decisions, that all decisions, uh, that are going to impact you to provide the business value that is allocated with your parameters and the, your performance measures that are, uh, all, aside, uh, that are allocated to the team. People should do within the teams that they, what they decide to do within the teams, but they need to be led by the values that they need to, as a team to provide. 
that that is basically one of the key basics of uh, everything that was put in front of the teams that was communicated and that was uh, built within this project for the next four and a half years to come because this project is following the strategy and for the next five years and it has the uh, by the next Bosnia Agile 2022, I'm sure that I'm going to be uh, presenting you a little different presentation of the much bigger success of this project and the teams that are yet to come. But the clear thing is that we have uh, communicated that there is a clear vision of what what the project, what the biology project is set up to do, accompanied by the KPI values that are cascaded down to everybody within the team. When I say within the team, it goes way beyond the team. It was it goes, if we said, we said that we have the representative from the sales, that representative from the sales is the representative of the sales in the entire region of Bosnia-Herzegovina. It's communi communicating the value to the every uh, agent that is working on our front offices, back offices, call center agents, and so on. So we needed to have the functional communities of the practice. We needed to create the little communities within, within the sales team, within the support teams, they are going to be our ambassadors of the change that is provided within the team. Once you have the result that is coming out of the project product team, agile team, for example, Picard, you have to uh, have the functional communities of the people that are supporting you because they see the success result, even if, even if in positive results, and even if they are driven by the KPIs and it's not going very well, you share the value that they need to share also with you and you need to explain to them what is it that they can extra do in order for us to succeed and then once you succeed we need to celebrate once you fail you need to celebrate that too because you learn something from the failure before uh, in a traditional environment success and a failure would like positive and negative thing but we we try to change that failure is a positive thing that you need to learn from one of the first campaigns that we try to do within one of the agile teams were very much unsuccessful but we previously we would try to find the way that to kind of criticize that but now we try to find a way to learn from it so that another campaign that is planned for the next 15 days becomes a success much better than before uh, teams are offered self-directed directed learning options meaning that we within the team we started by promoting that what the team needs, that the, for the team it will be uh, it will be realized within our legal department. We formed the enabling agile team. Enabling agile team was the team that was in charge for kind of be that icebreaker when we faced a lot of ice iceberg, and uh, there are icebreakers when we need to move forward and kind of enable for us, for example, the education formal certifications, uh, learning about new, new stuff, uh, or when we have different teams and within the different teams, we have people require that are asking for us to give them the same knowledge. Those teams, we said that gonna, they're going to be called SPOC teams as the, uh, as the key task for the SPOC is to share the same mind, the same, the same way that the, the, my, the knowledge that you need and the same way of thinking. So basically when apply that to the learning, we have the teams that are cross-functional teams you know, combined of individuals that need the same knowledge. And then we have the enabling team that is going to provide them all the things that they need in order just for them to succeed. Teams are cross-functional, cross-divisional teams, teams as, I, as I stated, we do not perceive working within the team as the project, something that is going to last for just a limited period of time and never happen again. No, we, uh, we, don't, we do not communicate also delivery managers or the managers in the process. We have stakeholders, we have teams. And we realized that uh, Voyager needs to be in a form of the project because we are going to establish the new ways of working. Once we establish the new ways of working, the teams are going to function driven by these basics. At the end, we realized that we need to forget about soft skills and mindsets. We really need to talk about habits. We need to form habits. And what better way to form habits than to have the framework, or this current framework, that is kind of uh, forcing you to have daily meetings, forcing you to have the, the, the regular habits that team needs to have. Today, a day cannot pass by without a couple of daily meetings from different product teams 
you realize you have you have to have respect for the team when the daily is, is happening you need to understand when the planning is happening and you need to start nudging in the way that if you need a little push we'll give you a little push from all the aspects in the, within the company and then everything is measured in the milestones in the terms of business value that is realized not throughout the time it's the business value that needs to be in place that when you communicate what business value have you provided, there's no way that you're going to have uh, showstoppers or that you're going to have some walls that you cannot break within the success of the working within the teams. So thank you so much 